Hallelujah. Thank you, Gabriel Praise Team, for that wonderful praise. Let us give them a round of applause. Thank you for your work every Wednesday. Now at this time, through Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 through 10, and Revelation chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, I will share a message entitled, Song of Moses, Song of the Lamb, and the New Song. So if you look at our scripture reading for today, we see here it says, Song of Moses, Song of the Lamb, and New Song. So there are these three expressions. So what are these songs? I looked at our founding pastor, Reverend um, Abraham Park's sermon, and... He was saying that Christianity is sometimes called the religion of praise and singing. And that's why praise is really important. We begin sermon with praise. And praise is a prayer put to melody. And that is why our founding pastor once said, a family that praises God will never perish. So, you know, we have some people who can sing and who do sing. Me, I can not personally sing. But that's not important. But it's the fact that we give the heart of praise to God. Even if you can't physically sing, you can just read the lyrics. And that's you praising to God. Because you're giving basically a prayer to God. And... If there's no heart of prayer when you are praising, then you're just singing with your lips. And so our uh, founding pastor said that praise without prayer is like a lullaby. It'll just put you to sleep. And he also said that prayer without praise is like sleep talking. So praise without prayer is like a lullaby. And prayer without praise is like sleep talking. So today... Uh, I just pray that each and every one of us and our families will be filled with praise so that we can glorify God together. I pray this in the name of the Lord. And so I want to talk about the relationship between Song of Moses, Song of the Lamb, and the new song, and what kind of redemptive lesson they teach us today. So first, let's look at the relationship between Song of Moses, Song of the Lamb, and the new song. So the relationship between the song of Moses, song of the Lamb, and the new song. So shortly speaking, these are these three songs are all new song. They are all new song. For instance, Song of Moses appears in two places, Exodus 15. And Deuteronomy chapter 32. The so Song of Moses appears in two places, Exodus 15 and Deuteronomy chapter 32. And at the time, the Song of Moses was a new song. And we also saw in the scripture reading today, Song of the Lamb, right? So Moses foreshadows Jesus Christ, right? If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15, Moses says this. He says here that your God, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you. You shall listen to him. So Moses is foreshadowing Jesus Christ. And so just as Moses foreshadows Jesus Christ, Song of Moses foreshadows the Song of the Lamb. So what is the new song? So song, the word song in Greek is ode, which is where we get the English word ode. And ode in English is a poem or song that praises or exalts or is dedicated to a person, thing, or event. So 
So it's when you are praising or you're exalting to something or someone special. So that, that's an ode. So a new song is a song that praises a new work of salvation by God. So why is it called a new song? Because God performs, there are a few times where God performs a new work of salvation within redemptive history. So when God fulfills a new work of salvation, a new song needs to be uh, sung to praise this new work that is performed by God. So that's why we see these three songs. Then our point number two, we'll look at the song of Moses. The song of Moses. So remember, this is um, in two locations. First, it's in Exodus chapter 15, right? So the song of Moses in Exodus chapter 15, it praises the new work of salvation through the Exodus. So think about this. Everything is new. The Exodus was new. So first, God gave them a new calendar, right? A new feast called Passover. So in Exodus chapter 12, verse 2, God literally tells Moses, today will be the first day of the first month. Today will be the new year. So he gave them a new calendar. And then he performed something new in the ten plagues. Because there were no, no such thing as a ten plague before. It never happened before. And God also gave the Israelites a new salvation through the blood of the Passover lamb. So everything was new. Everything, uh, this new work of salvation was uh, performed. So if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 34... Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 34 says here, Or has a God tried to go to take for himself a nation from within another nation by trials, by signs and wonders, and by war, and by mighty hands, and by an outstretched arm, and by great terrors, as the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? Right? It says here, A nation from within another nation by trials. No one else did ha have ever done this before. Have ever taken for himself a nation from within another nation. So, especially here, the crossing of the Red Sea was an amazing new work. And this is recorded in Exodus, Exodus chapter 14, right? And then... And right after Exodus chapter 14 and Exodus chapter 15, it talks about a new song. So, after, so the Exodus was fully completed only after crossing the Red Sea. So, before the new song, God gave them a new calendar, performed um, the ten plagues, gave the Israelites a new salvation through the blood of the Passover lamb. And then finally, the Israelites were able to cross over the Red Sea, and then ec the Exodus was fulfilled. It was completed. The Egyptians, the Egyptian slave masters, they were coming after the Israelites, right? But they died in the Red Sea, and they couldn't trace after the Israelites. And that's when it kind of concluded the Exodus. And then what do they say here in Exodus chapter 14, verse 30 to 31? Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. So God allowed the Israelites to see the Egy Egyptians, the dead Egyptians, because God wanted to tell them, see, you guys are now a new people. You guys are my people. I am the ruler. I have power, so I'm able to kill these Egyptians for you. So he's trying to kind of show them. 
his uh, miracles, his wonders. And then when Israel saw the great power which the Lord had used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. And then what do they say in Exodus chapter 15, verse 2? The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will extol him. So after seeing all these miracles done, the Israelites, they were confessing their faith, and they were praising. And, you know, that's when the Israelites confess that Yahweh was the true and only God. But the exodus and the crossing of the Red Sea, it foreshadows the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the exodus and the crossing of the Red Sea foreshadows the cross and the resurrection of, the, of Jesus Christ. So for instance, if you look at Luke chapter 9, verse 31, it says here, um, It says here, uh, who appearing in glory were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. So right here, his departure in Greek is Exodus. So Jesus' departure, basically Jesus' exodus. The fact that Jesus will die and resurrect. So there's a connection between exodus and the crossing of the Red Sea and Jesus who died on the cross and resurrected. So it was Jesus' blood that saved us, right? And remember the Passover lamb also saved the Israelites. So, and the crossing of the Red Sea foreshadows baptism. Crossing of the Red Sea foreshadows baptism. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 2, it says here, For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So crossing the Red Sea was um, an act of baptism. And baptism is a sign that we have been reunited with the death, with death, and uh, with the death and resurrection of Christ. So baptism is a sign that we have been united with the death and resurrection of Christ. So this is in Romans chapter six, verse one through uh, four through five. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So baptism means you are united with Jesus' death and resurrection. And so ultimately, it is showing us that we are connected with the death and resurrection of Christ. So the crossing of the Red Sea happened eight days after Passover and Exodus. So the crossing of the Red Sea happened eight days after Passover and Exodus. And that's when they sang. The Israelites sang a song. And then something happened on the eighth day. And this is uh, Thomas's confession of faith. So when Jesus first, uh, when he first, um, when he was resurrected, when he resurrected, Thomas didn't get to see Jesus at first, right? So it says here in John chapter 20, verse 20 to 26 to 28, after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. And then Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your finger and see my hands. And reach here for your hands and put it into my side. 
And do not be unbelieving, but believing. And then what does Thomas say? He says, my Lord and my God. So Thomas confessed, my God. Right? So he saw the resurrected Christ, and then he confesses, my God. So this was a new kind of confession of faith. It was Thomas's new song. So Thomas sees Christ has risen, and then he confesses. He m- sings a new song by confessing his faith, by saying, my Lord, my God. So when a new uh, work of salvation happens, a new song is, is sung. And then if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, we can see the song of Moses. This is the second, um, this is the second location where the song of Moses is found. The first one was um, in Exodus chapter 15, remember? So now Deuteronomy chapter 32. So the Deuteronomy chapter 32 is a song that is sung as the Israelites looked back upon the 40-year wilderness journey. So the wilderness was a place that is an un- 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 um, uninhabitable for people. But during the 40 years, God led them, right, with the pillar of fire and cloud. He fed them with manna from heaven. He brought water from the water, or from the rock. And then for 40 years, their clothes did not wear out. We can see this in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 4. Your clothing did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. So these things God has done for the Israelites. And so you must sing a new song, right, for all of these things that God does, right, did. But... The Israelites, they continued to be rebellious. And they complained and they were unfaithful to God. And so this song of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 32, this is, ta- this is um, talking about praising God who is faithful to his covenant promises. So despite the rebellion, the betrayal, God keeps his promise to the end. It is his unfailing love. So that's what this Deuteronomy chapter 32 is about. That's why if we read here, it says here, The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are just. A God of faithfulness and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. They have acted corruptly toward him. They are not his children because of their defect but are a perverse and crooked generation. But despite their perverse and crookedness, God stays faithful. It says right here, God stays faithful. Right here, faithfulness. So that's what this song of Moses is about in Deuteronomy chapter 32. So despite the fact that the Israelites were rebelling, complaining, betraying God, God still kept his promise. So this song was to teach those who have betrayed God. He knew that people will betray God, will rebel, will will complain. But this song is to teach those who are lost, to come back to God, to know that God keeps his promise until the end, to know that he is still loving us until the very end. So even though we betray him and re- rebel against him, it's the song is testifying how God will still be there for us. So this is kind of in a way for those to come back to God. So imagine, imagine you have this sand and you throw that into the seashore, into where the other sand are by the beach and, re- and try to find that sand afterwards. You won't be able to, right? It'll be so hard. You can't tell the difference. 
But God can. He will seek and he's going to find all of his remnants like sand and seashore. That's what this song of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 32 is about. How he will save those who are, who are yet undeserving. He still will love them, so he will save them. And so our third point we'll look at is the new song in Revelation. The new song in Revelation. So if you look at Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, it praises the Lamb who is worthy to unseal the book. So here, it praises the Lamb who is worthy to unseal the book. If you look at Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 through 5, God had this sealed book, right? Sealed little book. And then Apostle John cried and wept because he couldn't open this book. But God said not to worry because The one who has the seal of God will be able to open this book. So if you look at Revelation chapter 5 verse 9, it says here, And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals. For you were slain and purchased for God with your blood men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. So he will reveal the book that can be read by everyone, all tongue and nation. When Jesus first came here, it says in John chapter 16, verse 12, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. So this is saying Jesus, he left without being able to say everything, teach everything. And John chapter 16, verse 25 says, These words, these things I have spoken to you in figurative language. An hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but will tell you plainly of the Father. So in the end times, when the second coming Christ comes, he will reveal everything to us. And that will be the new word. And so when a new word comes, the, when the new word or new work of salvation comes, what happens? We need to sing a new song. And so that's the new song here in Revelation. And then God will seal the servants of God with that word. So when, once that book opens, he will seal the servants of God with that word. Revelation chapter 7 verse 3 says, saying, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bond servants of our God on their foreheads. So the word seal here is the same in both places. God will put the seal that was on the book onto the foreheads of his servants. That's what this is uh, trying to teach. So this signifies that the word that was in the book is now in the mind and the hearts of these servants. So these servants, these saints are true saints because they have the true they have received the true word. And in those who are sealed will be able to overcome all of the tribulation, all the beasts that will come their way in the end times. And so our goal is to, is to uh, have the seal on our foreheads and overcome the tribulations at the, in the end times. So after that, we'll be able to sing the new song. And that's here in Revelation 15. If you look at the new song in Revelation chapter 15, it, the, these people were sing, they sing the song of Moses and song of Lamb while standing on the sea of glass holding harps, right? So they have overcome the beast and its mark. So these are the 144,000 that is in Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 through 4.
So Revelation chapter 14 and chapter 15 are talking about the same people. The 144,000 and the sea of glass. There's a relation between these two. If you look at Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, it says here, I said to him, my Lord, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So these people who came out of the great tribulation sang a new song. So they have fought the dragon. If you look at Revelation chapter 12, there is a fight with the dragon. And then there is a fight with, with two beasts. Beast of the sea, beast of the earth. That's in Revelation chapter 13. So after fighting them and overcoming the fight, the tribulation, then they have, then they will sing the new song. These are the people who have the seal in their foreheads and who have overcome and, and have passed the great tribulation, the last tribulation in the end times. So it is the seal of God that have secured them, that have protected them against this tribulation, this hardship. So this is... This is impossible to overcome with our own strength. It is because of God and His grace that we're able to overcome. So our conclusion, new song praises a new work that no human being can achieve. New song praises a new work that no human being can achieve. So for instance, the Red Sea, we can't pass that on our own. But God enabled us to pass. So likewise. So there is a reason why God says to remember the past. Remember the days of old. Because we need to see the past. We need to see the days of old. Believe it. And then when a great tribulation comes our way. When there are things where we can't be able to handle on our own. Rather than trying to figure it out on your own. The re remember God's miracle. Remember his word and his promise. That's what this is about, this new song that we need to remember. So don't believe in yourself because you'll end up doubting and then you'll give up. So this song is to teach you don't do that. Don't try to achieve and accomplish on your own. Achieve with Father's word. That's what this new song is all about. My beloved saints, there will be a great tribulation coming our way. But those who remember the new song will be able to overcome that tribulation. So please, please I'll believe in that. God will allow things that we aren't able to achieve on our own. So please hold on to this precious word. And I pray that every day we'll be able to sing the new song so that it's indelved into our hearts so that we may be able to overcome all tribulations that come our way. I pray this upon the name of the Lord.